Hello YouTube, welcome to another pre-season 7 League of Legends champion guide. Today, we're gonna cover Jungle Lee Sin. Your will, my hands. For more of my content, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash egamingtv or on Twitter at egaming underscore tv. All of the links for my social medias and the timestamps for this guide will be down in the video description, so make sure you check that out. I do ride point giveaways at the end of every month on my Twitter, as well as a poll each night on which champion I should cover the next day. So, if you're interested in entering those Riot Point giveaways, or you want to vote on which champion guide should be next, make sure you head over to Twitter. But now, let's move on to Lee Sin's pros and cons. Lee Sin's one of the best early game junglers out there with very strong ganks and pretty damn solid early game burst damage. He's got a ton of mobility and is easily one of the best playmakers in all of League of Legends. Finally, Lee Sin has two different ways to reveal enemy champions that are in stealth, which makes him a really solid pick against Vayne and other stuff like Akali. For Lee Sin's cons, he's got a very weak late game and he scales very poorly. The good thing, however, is since his early game and mid game are so strong, he usually doesn't even make it to the late game anyways. With his skill shot reliant kit and all of the different combos he can pull off, he's also very hard to master. Once mastered, however, he can completely take control of games and is very flashy while doing it. For your masteries, you'll want to go 12 ferocity and 18 cunning, grabbing Thunderlord's Decree as your keystone mastery. With the removal of Strength of the Ages, this is by far the best mastery page on Lee Sin. Now you could also go 18 Resolve and get the Colossal Mastery Keystone as well, but it only works on your kick. Therefore, it's not that impactful of a mastery on Lee Sin, and I would just stick with Thunderlords. For my runes, I like to go for Attack Damage Reds, Armor Yellows, Scaling Magic Resist Blues, and Attack Damage Quints. It's also very popular to get 6 Glyphs of Cooldown Reduction, so you're a little bit stronger in the early game, since you do get 5% CDR. I, however, almost always get a Black Cleaver in my early core build, and therefore I will have a lot of CDR in the early game myself, so I do prefer having the Scaling Magic Resist. Smite is going to be your first required summoner spell as a jungler. It will keep you sustained through the jungle and allow you to clear through the whole thing. It's also great for securing dragons and barons so the enemy jungler can't hop in and smite it away from you. Flash is then our second required summoner spell. It's a great escape tool if we get caught in a bad position, but it's also excellent when used defensively to chase a low health enemy. As Lee Sin, of course, flashing behind an enemy and then kicking them into your team is also a very, very effective way of using flash. Don't take anything else. Now let's kick off your abilities by looking at your passive, Flurry. After using an ability, Lee Sin's next two basic attacks within 3 seconds gain 40% bonus attack speed, returning 20 energy on the first attack and 10 on the second. So to use this ability as effectively as possible, you need to use two basic attacks in between each ability so you make best use of that bonus attack speed. As you can see, when I am taking down this tower here, I am using one ability, attacking twice, and then using a second, and on and on it goes. Of course, on jungle camps and when dueling, do the same thing. Now let's move on to your Q ability, which is called both Sonic Wave and Resonating Strike. Lee Sin fires a Sonic Blast in the target direction, dealing physical damage to the first enemy it hits and granting true sight of them for 3 seconds. If Sonic Wave hits, Lee Sin can cast Resonating Strike within the next 3 seconds. When you use that Resonating Strike, Lee Sin dashes to the enemy marked by Sonic Wave dealing physical damage capped against non-champions. This here also does percentage of targets missing health extra damage which makes it a great execute ability. So this ability is your bread and butter one and it definitely does the most damage on Lee Sin. The one problem though is it can be somewhat hard to land, but you can fix this by landing your Dragon's Rage which is your ultimate first, and then you can land this much easier since they will go in a straight line. Regardless, we want to max this ability first as it will do the most single target damage. Now we move on to our W which is Safeguard and Iron Will. The first part is Safeguard and Lee Sin dashes to the target ally or friendly ward. If the ally is a champion, both they and Lee Sin are shielded for 2 seconds and Safeguard's cooldown is reduced to 50%. Lee Sin can self-cast Safeguard to himself, but of course you get the full cooldown. If Safeguard is used, Lee Sin can cast Iron Will within 3 seconds. When you use Iron Will, for 4 seconds, Lee Sin gains bonus lifesteal and bonus spell vamp. So I usually max this ability second because the shield is rather solid, and of course so is that spell vamp and lifesteal. This of course is also the ability we use to ward hop. All you have to do is drop a ward behind the enemy, Safeguard to it, and then kick them into your team. Now let's look at your last basic ability, your E, which is called Tempest, and Cripple. Lee Sin smashes the ground, dealing magic damage to nearby enemies and granting true sight of them for 4 seconds. If Tempest hits an enemy, Lee Sin can cast Cripple within the next 3 seconds. When you use Cripple, Lee Sin slows all enemies in range marked by Tempest for 4 seconds, decaying over the duration. 
So usually I max this ability last, but if I'm doing a ton of counter jungling, then I will max this second before my W. Honestly though, you only need the one early point, so you can get true sight of enemies like Akali's and Veins, and of course to actually slow the enemy. But the slow percentage does scale after all, which is kinda nice. But now let's look at your ultimate, Dragon's Rage. When activated, Lee Sin goes into Chuck Norris mode and Roundhouse kicks the target enemy champion, instantly rooting them for 0.25 seconds, dealing physical damage and knocking them back over one second. Enemies hit by the enemy turn projectile take bonus physical damage based on the kick target's bonus health and are knocked up for one second. So this here is one of the biggest playmaking pieces of your kit, but of course you do have to use your ward hop or a flash when used in combination. The most effective way to use this ability is to ward hop or flash behind an enemy champion that's squishy, kick them into your team, have them get deleted, and then turn it into a 4v5. Now in a full blown team fight when there is a tanky champion in front, you can also kick this into a team and knock all of them up, doing a massive amount of damage. Both are fantastic ways to use the ability, but generally it is best to kick something like the AD carry into your team. For your skill order, you first want to put a point into your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. Then we want to focus on maxing our Q as it does provide the highest single target damage and the execute is really strong on the ability. We then have the option of maxing our W or our E second. In a normal game I will take the W because it will make you a little bit tankier and the shield can really help your team as well. Maxing your E second is also very viable if you do like that increased slow percentage or you do want a little bit more AoE damage. I normally however just get one early point at level 3 in my E ability and then save it for last. Because of Lee Sin's kit, he has a ton of different combos, but here are two very solid ones. So first here we have the very popular ward hop and kick combo. You'll first want to start by dropping a ward behind the enemy and quickly safeguarding to the ward. Of course, if you need to, you can also use flash. Then we want to use our dragon's rage to kick the enemy towards our team and then land our sonic wave so we can either execute or jump to them with our resonating strike. It's a very high damage solid combo and as long as we can get it on a squishy target, we can easily win the next team fight. Next we have the melee range execute and we first start by landing our sonic wave on the enemy. Then we want to hit the enemy with our dragon's rage and then finish off that enemy with our resonating strike as it does percentage missing health damage. Of course you also have the option of using your dragon's rage at the very start and then using both cues after. This is possibly a more reliable combo unless you know for certain that you can land that sonic wave. There's two main jungler routes I do on Lee Sin and one I refer to as a normal start and the other an invade start. For my normal start, I'll do either blue or red buff, then kill the wolves, and then do either the blue or red buff, depending on which one's left. Usually I'll start at whichever buff my bot lane is near. Now for my invade start, like I'm doing in this gameplay here, I'll start at my blue buff, make sure I save my smite, and then kill the enemy's red buff. At this point, you can either wait for the jungler to kill him at his own red, or you can take golems to hit level 3, and then gank. Usually, I'll go for the golems and gank. Lee Sin is a pretty solid counter jungler because he can get through camps really quickly if he does max his E second and he's very safe with his high mobility and also a decent duelist against most junglers. He's not as strong of a duelist as he was before when he still had that attack speed removal on his E ability, but he's still pretty damn decent. Try to place deep wards into the enemy jungle to keep track of them. Take camps whenever they're not near them or set up in a brush they'll walk through soon so you can delete them. You can either leave a small minion so the camp won't respawn, but if you're planning to counter jungle over and over, then you'll want to make sure you're clearing them. Once you manage to solo the enemy jungler, think about taking dragon with help from your bot lane. Lee Sin is a very strong ganker since he has multiple gap closers, good mobility, and high early game damage. You'll want to save either your resonating strike or your safeguard for when the enemy either uses a built in escape ability or flashes. When coming into the lane, you can either use your safeguard to get near the enemy by using it on a ward, or a nearby teammate. Of course, you also have the option of using your sonic wave and resonating strike to close that gap as well. Just make sure you hold on to one of them. When you're finally near the enemy, you can either kick them towards your team with Dragon's Rage, or slow them with Cripple. Then all you have to do is follow up with some damage for a rather easy kill. Lee Sin is only a decent team fighter. His main strength is dueling and ganking, but he can also contribute a lot in team fights if played properly. In early and mid game team fights, you're still going to be able to delete squishy targets with your kit and soak a lot of damage on the front line for your team. In later game team fights though, you're not going to be doing much damage and you're not very tanky either, you're more of a bruiser. You can still single handedly win a team fight though if you can manage to kick a high kill priority target into your team. This is your goal. Ward hop or flash behind the enemy when you can and use your dragon's rage to kick back the target. Now I'm going to cover a couple hard matchups and first up is Skarner. Now he's a really strong pick against you and it's basically all because of his impale. 
If you go in for a Dragon's Rage against somebody squishy on his team, he'll be able to grab you with his Impale if he is nearby and get you killed instead. He's then going to outscale the crap out of you and you're not going to be able to outduel him at all. Next up is Nocturne and he's somebody who will destroy you in 1v1 duels as long as he can block your Sonic Wave with a Shroud of Darkness. As long as he blocks it, he'll stop most of your damage and destroy you with the doubled attack speed he gets from blocking that spell. He's also pretty damn annoying to deal with as well because he can counter gank you rather easily with his paranoia. So let's look at two more and first up here is Hecarim. Now he's easily one of the strongest junglers at the moment and he will give Lee Sin a lot of issues just like all of the other champions in the game. He's got a ridiculous amount of damage when he gets his Trinity Force which works great with his Rampage. All of the mobility he gets from Devastating Charge and Onslaught of Shadows will also allow him to counter gank you pretty easily. Now Udir is hard to deal with as well because you can't outduel him in the early game and he also outscales you pretty damn hard. You're going to need to avoid him as much as you can and spend the majority of your time ganking his lanes. Use your superior ganks and mobility to get your lane snowballing and try to not let the game go too late where Udir becomes an unkillable raid boss. Alright now, the item build. We're going to want to start with a Hunter's Machete, Refillable Potion and a Warding Totem. For our core build, we get the Tracker's Knife enchanted with Warrior, a Black Cleaver, and a Dead Man's Plate. We want to go for the Tracker's Knife because this will always allow us to have a ward so we can actually ward hop. I then really like getting the Black Cleaver because 20% CDR works great on Lee Sin, as does that Armor Shred. Of course, it also gives you a health pool early on. I then get the Dead Man's Plate for a bigger health pool as well, some armor, and even some more mobility. For our boot options, we first have Merc Treads if we're against a lot of CCs and AP, Ninja Tabbies against a lot of AD, Boots of Mobility if we want to gank a lot more often, Boots of Swiftness for all around mobility, and Aeonian Boots if we do need 10% CDR. For our offensive items, we first have a Ravenous Hydra. This is a great way to get some AoE and some lifesteal into your kit. Titanic Hydra kind of offers the same, but instead of some lifesteal, we do get a nice health pool. Yumu's Ghostblade is a decent item if we do get it early on so we can activate it and have even stronger ganks. If we're really snowballing and we want to add some more damage, we could get a Duskblade as well. The out of combat movement speed also makes our ganks just a little bit quicker. Then finally, if we do need some armor penetration, we could get an LDR to get through a big chunk of armor. For our defensive items, we first have the Randuins. It does have a really nice activate slow, but it also reduces damage from crits, which is pretty damn nice against stuff like Yasuo. Against very high AD teams, we could then also get a Thorn Mail to return some damage back to the enemy champions. Maw is then one of my favorite defensive pickups because of the shield that it does provide when you do get low and blocks a lot of AP damage. We could also get a Locket if our support didn't get one to grant our team a nice shield. If we're against a team that has a lot of spells we want to try to block, then a Banshee's Veil would be a very solid item. Of course, there's always the Guardian Angel. It's a fantastic way to get some armor and magic resist, but also come back to life. Lee Sin also has the option of going for an Edge of Night. It's a great way to get more damage, but the fact that you can channel a spell shield and get it for 10 seconds is a very solid thing as well when you are going in for a kick. But for our example full build, we take our core, get some Merc Treads, get that Maw, and a Guardian Angel. We will deal a pretty solid amount of damage since we have the Warrior Enchantment, a Black Cleaver, and a Maw, but we'll also be very tanky at the same time. But that, ladies and gentlemen, covers everything I've got for Jungle Lee Sin. Please don't forget to check out the video description below for a link to all of my different social medias. But other than that, thank you guys a ton for watching the video. I hope you guys did enjoy it and you learned something new. And I will see you guys in the one tomorrow. Peace.